Daisy Head Maisie by Dr. Seuss. Read to me. Read it myself. Autoplay. It's hard to believe such a thing could be true. And I hope such a thing never happens to you. But it happened, they say, to poor Maisie McGrew. And it happened like this. <laughs> Door. Cat in the hat. <laughs> she was sitting one day at her desk in her school in her usual way. Hair. School. Boy. Maisie. When she felt a small twitch on the top of her head. So Maisie looked up, and she almost dropped dead. Something peculiar was going on there. Hair. Book. How in the world? A daisy was sprouting right out of her hair. Wait, how? Daisy. Daisy. Behind her was sitting young Herman Butch Strudel. Mm. This looks like a daisy up here on her noodle. It doesn't make huh? sense why it couldn't be so. A noodle's no place for a daisy huh? to grow. Maisie. Noodle. Butch. <laughs> then up spoke another boy, Einstein Van Tass, the brightest young man in the whole of the class. It's a very odd place to be sprouting a daisy, but nevertheless, one is growing on daisy. Einstein Van Tass. Hey, look it, cried Butch, right here in this room, Daisy Head Maisie. She's bursting in bloom. <laughs> Miss Sneecher, the teacher, came rushing up quick. <laughs> Such nonsense! Oh. Some child here is playing a trick! <laughs> Miss Sneecher! <laughs> Which one of you boys stuck that thing in her hair? You know that a daisy could never grow there! <laughs> But teacher, said Butch, I saw the thing rise right out of her head with my very own eyes. Just give it a yank if you think I tell lies. But Miss Sneecher had heard quite enough of this talk. Maisie, hold still. Let me get at that stalk. Ouch, hollered Maisie. Maisie. Quit yanking, Butch said. You're giving her pains. I'll bet that those roots go way down in her brains. The kids in the class started shouting like crazy. Daisy head, Daisy head, Daisy head, Maisie. Hair. Children, be quiet! Good grief at the last! Miss Sneecher was shocked by the noise in her class. I've talked in this room 20 years, maybe more, but I've never seen anything like this before. You'll have to report it. You'll just have to come to the principal's office and show Mr. Grum. Miss Meacher. <laughs> now the principal, good Mr. Gregory Grum, was a very wise man, just as smart as they come. He knew more than anyone else in this nation about long division and multiplication. Statue. Books. Cat in the hat. He knew all the answers. Why oceans are deep. Why skies are so high. And why mountains are steep. He should have the answer to this thing on Maisie. My word, he declared. It's a genuine daisy. I've seen them quite often in fields growing wild. But never before on the head of a child. Now, what in the world ever made this thing sprout? 
I have no idea, but I'm going to find out. It says here, it says, daisies grow on the land. They grow between rocks. They grow also in sand. Books. It mentions right here, they can grow in a pot. But mention the head of a girl, it does not. Hmm. Daisies, it says, sometimes grow in Alaska. Also Missouri, Rhode Island, Nebraska. They grow in Japan and in Spain and Peru. In India, France, and in Idaho, too. Hmm. They grow in South Boston and also in Rome. But why should they grow on this little girl's dome? Say, look it, said Maisie. Hmm. Hair. Maisie. Hmm. Oh. It's wilting. It's drooping. Oh. How wonderful, Maisie. It soon will be dead. You'll be rid of that <sighs> daisy. Book. Daisy. Phew. In just a few minutes, our troubles will pass, declared Mr. Grum. Take her back to the class. Then the principal saw a most terrible oh, no. sight. The yeah. daisy was dying, and that was all right. But that daisy was part of poor Maisie McGrew, <laughs> and Maisie was starting to wilt away, oh, no. too. Teacher, said Grum, you know what I think? Oh, no. They're both going oh. to die. Hurry, bring them a drink. <coughs> oh, yikes. Maisie. Oh, no. <gasps> that Daisy, that girl's the worst problem in town. You take her away and you make her lie down. Oh. Puddle. Oh, no. You oh, lock no. her up tight in that room down the hall. There are quite a few numbers that I've got to call. Get Maisie's parents on the end of the line. I need them here quickly while there is still time. Oh. On the phone, Maisie's mom asked, Whoa. what's all the fuss? <laughs> then, goodness to Betsy, I'll catch the next bus. Maisie's mom. Whoa. Phone. <laughs> Mask. Welder. Scarf. A call to the shoe store reached Mr. McGrew. He answered while holding a customer's shoe. Chain. Mr. Grum. Oh. Yes, this is... Oh, no. I really must go. Mr. McGrew. Mr. Grum. Phone. A doctor should see her, the principal said, and an expert on plants like the one on her head. <gasps> so he called Dr. Eisenbart, who said, What a trick! My stethoscope's packed! I'll be there in a tick! Patient. Wait, Doc, said his patient. I'll come along, too. My brother's a vet, and he knows this McGrew. When he heard, Finch the florist grabbed for his shears. I'll be there just as soon as my truck can shift gears. Flowers. Cactus. <sighs> Meanwhile, poor Maisie lay down on a couch. The daisy slumped down on its leaves <sharp> in a slouch. Bees. <sighs> But the window was open, because it was warm, and the sweet-smelling daisy attracted a swarm of bees. Swarm. Bees. <coughs> Pillow. Bees! <coughs> bees!
The faster she ran, the faster they flew. So Maisie kept running. What else could she do? She attempted to hide behind Officer Thatcher, who cupped out his hat like a bumblebee catcher. Bumblebees. Hat. The bees took his hat. Thatcher said, I am no fool, and ran after Maisie back to the school. Principal Grum didn't know what to do. Principal Grum didn't know what to do. It's worse, cried Miss Sneecher. Much worse than we feared. The Daisy and Maisie have both disappeared. Behind her came charging Mr. McGrew, chased by a customer chasing his shoe. Finch the florist, Dr. Eisenbart too, Dr. Eisenbart's patient and Mrs. McGrew. Dr. Eisenbart. Huh? Then through the window with Officer Thatcher, who slammed the pane shut so the bees couldn't catch her. Hair. Oh, man. Jumped Maisie McGrew to the floor in a splatter, with the daisy still there, except taller and fatter. My poor little daughter, the daisy, it's true, I'm going to faint cried Mrs. McGrew. <laughs> Mrs. McGrew! <laughs> tut, tut, said the florist. There's no need for tears. Just because there's a daisy between her two ears, I'll snip it right off with my sharp pruning shears. Fish, the florist. <laughs> She's my patient. Don't touch her. You must stand apart. We have to have room, said Doc Eisenbart. I think that Maisie and her plant could help me get a research grant. Shears. Then the door opened wide and the mayor stepped inside. At meetings and greetings there was none to compare. He was best at long speeches, chock full of hot air. Hair. I promise, my friends, that if I'm re-elected, this Daisy on Maisie will be disconnected. Hair. The law of our fathers is simple and sound. Daisies belong and should stay in the ground. The rest are illegal. We'll bar them from town. The mayor. From the back came a voice, sometimes loud, sometimes slick, of a wheeler and dealer who knew every trick. I'm Finagle the Agent. You've heard of me, I'm sure. I represent young... What's his name? And others now on tour. But Maisie, you're so special. Please oh. let me shake your hand. Your talent is a wondrous oh, thing. Man. Unique in all the land. Finagle the Agent. Daisy Head Maisie, spelled out in bright light, will oh draw my. kids in the day <laughs> and parents at night. Curtains. Daisy Head Maisie, you've got quite an act. Just stick with me, kid, and sign this contract. Your flower oh needs to sign, too. Hmm. Oh, yikes. Daisy. <laughs> Her mother said, Maisie, don't be a fool. And the principal begged her not to leave school. But Maisie didn't stop to blink. She signed her name in Think Proof Ink. Oh, my. Contract. And the Daisy signed, too. Oh, my. Daisy Head Fever was gripping the nation. It had quickly become a worldwide sensation. Daisy. Daisy had burgers and Daisy had drinks. Daisy had stockings and Daisy had sinks. Daisy had sink. Daisy had buttons and Daisy had bows. Maisie was famous, the star of her shows. 
Fame had knocked on Maisie's door. Now she had it all, and more. Piles of money stacked in tins. Vine. No more. But what is money without friends? A dream had led her far astray. That was the price she had to pay. Maisie. No more. No more. Maisie McGrew ran night and day. Nowhere to go, nowhere to stay. Because she was sure that everyone must have written her off in total disgust. Over and over again in her head, these are the words that poor Maisie said. Tears. I can never go home. Nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. <laughs> Nobody loved her? Poor Maisie McGrew. <laughs> it's hard to believe such a thing could be true. Hair. And maybe that's why, then, this daisy above, when Maisie, below, <laughs> began talking of love. Well, you know about daisies. When love is in doubt, the job of a daisy is try and find out. They love her. They love her not. They love her. They love her not. Don't worry, Maisie. They love you. They love me. <laughs> Well, that's how it all happened. The thing went away. And Maisie McGrew is quite happy today, back at her studies and doing just great in all of her subjects in room number eight. And concerning that daisy, you know that it never grew out of the top of her head again, ever. Room number eight. Er... Well, it practically never popped up there again, excepting occasionally, just now and then. Ding! And, after all, I'm getting used to it.